Hello guys, welcome to my channel Immigrant, my name is Sagar and today's video which is in continuation with the video that I did on studying business analysis in Canada where we talked about various courses, colleges and more in detail with Vadahi who did her post graduation in business analysis from Mohawk College. So if you haven't done it, please check it out later after you're done watching today's video which will cover is business analysis a tough course to study, how many assignments do you get to do, what's the average fees for a college. And finally, few tips from Vedahi, who is also working as a faculty for business analysis at Mohawk College. And if you're someone who's still exploring different career options in Canada, do watch my other videos on various courses and professions. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Having said that, without any further ado, let's get into our today's video. I, like I said, business analysis is definitely not a difficult course. It is not a difficult course in compared to any other course. A lot of people say it is difficult. It is not difficult in terms of the content. It is not difficult in terms of you're not able to um, apply the skills somewhere else. It's just difficult because you have a lot of assignments. You have a lot of uh, work that is to be done on ongoing real projects with real organizations so i think it just puts an added pressure to you uh, onto you but i wouldn't say it is difficult uh, if you do the right kind of research the right kind of requirements gathering for every project that you will be a part of and use the right kind of resources i think it is very very engaging and very interesting you won't even know when the entire one year completes we had we had two major projects in our course one of the course uh, one of the one of the projects was with an actual panel not just a was not just a assignment on paper was not just an assignment that you write down so i think when you have to present something present a project that you've actually worked on in front of the real panel that is actually responsible for the project from that organization it just puts a little bit more pressure because um uh, when you're just doing it on paper, you're like, okay, hey, there's a project. I completed it and I'm just going to give it to my professor for getting it marked and that's it. But when you have teams, when you have groups and when only one group is going to get selected and is going to be able to present in front of the actual organization, I think that puts an added pressure. So I would say at each step of the course, with each assignment, the pressure increases but no, it is not difficult at all. And I think everybody can outshine in this course. If you have experience, if you don't have experience, if you are very new to this course as well. So like I said, I am saying again, it is a course for self growth. Every person who has, was a part of this course, we had, we had somebody in our course who was 60 years old. We had, we had people who had 10 years of experience. We had people who were just 21 or 22 and uh, just started their career. Uh, we had we had people with just someone like me with maybe just two or three years of experience and not as much someone who's in the mid levels, you know. So I think um, that is what I would I would say that no, it is not difficult. It's just the added pressure that makes it sound difficult, but definitely not difficult. And what about the assignments? Do you get to do a lot of assignments? Yes, we get to do a lot of assignments. Um, it might sound very tedious to you that I have I have like 10 deadlines in the next coming week. But um, I think you get so used to getting the deadlines done that you're actually preparing yourself for, for a professional environment. Because when you are in a professional environment, it's not about an assignment. It's not about are you going to get graded or not. Uh, I think in the course, you it, it's more like a mock play, like you, you get a chance to do what you're doing in the course just uh, just as a demonstration and then you directly do it at your professional, in, in a professional environment. So you are doing a lot of courses, there are a lot of theoretical courses, there are a lot of research based course uh, uh, assignments, sorry I said courses but assignments, there are a lot of um, I, I would say assignments in terms of real assignments, like we did real assignments with Mohawk College Continuing Education Department. 
so we worked with an entire department where we took self paced interviews with real people not just online uh, i think covid was um, was not there when we did the course at least for that first semester so we were very lucky to be able to interact with people so it gives you a it gives you a lot of exposure in terms of let's say you're at work and your manager comes and tells you that hey sagar why don't you just go and take an interview from this person because he's our client and i want you to gather requirements you're just in a panic situation i've never done this before what do i do right but you've but if you're a business analysis student you've already done it so so whatever bad experience you have you've done that in your first time and in that first time when you do you're not alone you have your classmate or you might have your professor with you so when you do it in a professional environment i think you're just much more confident to put it there so i think the assignments are a huge part of the course and everybody should take them very seriously because the assignments honestly sound very vague but when you look at it and research more on to it and when the final product is actually done and when you do the submission you realize that you ended up doing much more work than you thought of the assignment when you just first read it or just heard about it from your professor so yes assignments are a huge part of the course so just the last question about the courses before we move to the certification part uh what's the average fees uh, if you can okay. just give a estimate number So the average fees uh, for colleges, I can speak, uh, would be very different for universities. But speaking of an average number, I would say somewhere between eight thousand to eight thousand five hundred Canadian dollars per semester. If you're doing a one-year course, you would be looking at seventeen thousand Canadian dollars to seventeen thousand five hundred Canadian dollars on an average. um i think uh 500 or 1000 dollars may vary according to the college or what the registration fees for each college looks like or i think i i spoke about the ibm badge uh, moha college gives it to you for free so uh that is there then i think uh having a membership with the international institute of business analysis just like how uh we have a membership for cpas or pmps a business analysis also has its own organized uh, has its own association so a lot of uh, colleges might charge you for that uh, mohawk did not charge us for any of this uh, it was included in our uh, fees although at the beginning of the course we did give an extra 250 dollars but i think that was uh, just for the certain resources and for certain uh, personality tests that we did so i i would say definitely varies from college to college but uh, when you're choosing a course in terms of your budget i think also look at the kind of certifications you're getting are you getting a lean six sigma certification are you getting an ibm certification if you're getting a lean six sigma certifications i how many belts are you getting are you getting yellow belt are you getting green belt are you getting yellow belt theory not just theory so i think looking at that is also very important because certifications do play a huge role when you go out in the job market looking for a good analyst role a junior business analyst or just a business analyst role so talking more about the certifications uh, could you name some of the certifications according to the canadian job market speaking about the certifications when you go out there in the job market and you are looking at a lot of um, a lot of job descriptions i think the certification that every organization requires is very very different depending on let's say you're applying for i did my co-op with hamilton health sciences if you're doing if you're in the healthcare industry they ask for completely different certifications than what somebody has ever even thought of or if you go for let's say banking industry they might ask you for mutual fund certification or ifix exam or things like that right so it depends on where you are applying but i think the basic certifications would be uh, the ibm cognos analytic certification the blue box live certification the tableau analytic certification robotic process automation certifications are so much in demand right now because everybody is trying to do rp or automation with their organization lean six sigma lean six sigma yellow belt lean six sigma green belt um 
I think a lot of manufacturing automotive industries are asking for these certifications. So yes, um, lots of certifications, but these would be the very basic certifications that I, I believe that pe uh, students can actually focus on. And apart from that, depending on which industry you go, it's the certifications are always going to change. But uh, I believe certifications should not stop you. If an organization is actually asking you for a certification, you can always mention in your resume that you are pursuing the certification. Let's say somebody is asking you for a PMP and you don't have a PMP, you can actually enroll in a PMP course. You can mention in your resume that you have enrolled and this is when you are planning to finish the course and you can actually learn few terminologies about PMP, understand what PMP is, understand what project management is before your interview. And in the interview, you can make it clear that, hey, this is what I'm planning to pursue. And I understand you need somebody with this kind of certification. But once I join the organization, you can probably give me just a month or two and I can finish the course or I can finish the certification. And I think every organization agrees to that. If you're lucky, they might even end up paying for your fees. So they might reimburse your fees to you. So there is no harm in uh, not completing a certification, but always mentioning that you're pursuing a certification and then telling the organization that I don't have the certification right now. But if, if I do get an offer letter, I promise that I would be able to complete the certification in a span of two months or three months or depending on what certification it is. And I think everybody, under, every organization understands that because they want to see you grow and they want to give you a chance. All right. So before we wrap up this video, uh, any advice <clears throat> you would like to give to students who have zero experience or people who have experience and they're planning to come to Canada and start their career in business analyst? Uh, from my personal experience, I would like to say also after working with Mohawk, right. I have worked with Mohawk for a long time now. Keep, uh, keep creating a lot of content on LinkedIn so people actually notice you. People actually know that, okay, you have a very great profile. Uh, have a good LinkedIn summary so you can make professional connections. I think uh, the next one here, uh, I wouldn't say unfortunate, but just a very different time in terms of we can't really go out for networking events or go for seminars and meet new people. So I think LinkedIn is a very good way to make new connections. And I, a lot of people say that people don't really respond, but if you are professional in the way you speak, if you are very, um, if you understand that the other person has time constraints, you also have time constraints. And if you keep your content in a very professional manner, I think everybody out there is ready to help you. Um, so LinkedIn connections, good, good content on your LinkedIn page a good resume, a good cover letter, taking help from people. Don't be shy to ask for help. I mean, a lot of us feel that um, I don't have two years of experience. I don't have one year of experience. Uh, what am I going to write in my resume? But somebody who has 10 years of experience started somewhere 10 years ago. Everybody starts somewhere. So I think you also have a starting point. So no matter where you start, uh, do not underestimate yourself. Always, uh, always, if somebody is asking you what your salary expectations is, don't, don't say that I have no experience, so I'm okay to settle down for $14 an hour. No, I have no experience, so I can, I'm okay to work as whatever you give me. No, you need to be confident about yourself you need to say that yes this is what i can do and you do deserve the best so just work towards it and i think just be patient because it is very difficult to keep a positive mindset and be patient at the same time and move on but i think uh, you everybody out there with or without experience it is possible for them to do it and i think everybody's journey is very different so there might be exceptions for you so you never know all right guys that's all for today thank you so much for watching i hope you found this helpful give this video a thumbs up if you like share with your friends i do read all the comments so feel free to drop any questions or suggestions for myself in the comment box down below i wish you guys all the best stay safe 
Stay strong and I'll see you in my next video. Somebody who has 10 years of experience started somewhere 10 years ago. Everybody starts somewhere.